Alright, looking at our colors today, we are using acrylic paint. We have burnt umber, cadmium yellow pale, yellow, ochre, we have phthalo blue, black, titanium white, sap green, and a hint of crimson. To get started with this painting, we are going to take some white, tiny dab of ochre, tiny dab of the black. Just mix that in to get it nice and bright so that it's not perfectly white, but it's a little bit off-white, kind of light gray. And you're just going to start by basically filling up the top half of the canvas with that color. And you can add a little bit more white to it as you get towards the top. So I'm just using a large brush here. It's a flat tip brush with a little bit of an angle. And I'm just making back and forth brush strokes, letting it blend together very nice and smoothly. Using mostly just white at the top. And as you can see, we just got that nice smooth transition there. All right, and now the next thing is to add a little bit of black. And let's add a little bit of burnt umber. Maybe a hint of crimson. Hint, tiny hint of the phthalo blue. And we don't want this to be too much different from our current color. We don't want it to, we want it to be like one shade darker. And we're just going to start by adding some little spikes here. These are going to be for our trees. Make sure you keep them, you know, kind of not evenly spaced and changing in how tall they are. You don't want them all to be exactly the same. And we're basically just going to carry this across the hole from like that halfway point. And you don't want it to go too high up. You don't want to make your trees too tall because these are the background trees. We're going to have some trees closer in the foreground that are going to be much larger. Okay. And now we're going to switch to a smaller brush, still a flat tipped angled brush. And now we're just going to start to make these shapes look a little bit more like a tree. I'm trying to make the shapes look more like a distant tree line. So I'm just taking the brush and I'm making up and down brush strokes, starting to pull the brush out a little bit from our existing line, just so that we can get a little bit more of a tree look, like a tall triangle. And then we can just do a couple little crisscrosses. So I'm just dabbing the brush here to give it that look like we've got some branches coming out. So before I was doing up and down brush strokes and now I'm just kind of dabbing without carrying the paint, just without brushing it. I'm just plopping it on there <laughs> and just making little crisscross patterns more horizontal, especially the ones back here. We can add even more white back here. Just make them really misty. Almost like we don't know where the tops of the trees are. Then I'm just going to take a little more black, a little bit of umber, and I'm going to make a bottom for this part of the tree line. Then we just carry that up. You can start to build. You can play around with the dabbing the brush again. This will start to make some trees look a little bit more in front of other trees. It gives you a little bit of depth. Kind of transition your grays down to that gray that you just made that line. You don't want to have like a solid line that doesn't really blend up. And now we can take some 
white, we can switch back to our large brush and just take some white and like a hint of brown just so that it's not pure white and this brush I didn't clean off either so there's still a hint of those gray tones in there and you just want to go right up to that horizontal line you made if you need to cover it up a little bit you can but that's going to be your water line right there so I'm just carrying this out all the way over then I'm going to take some more white and blend all the way down to the bottom of the canvas up again with a little bit of white just to push them farther back. You can add a little bit of white on the tops a little bit and that'll make it look even more foggy. So I got a really foggy background there. And now we're going to start to take some of that black, mix it with our white, take a little hint of your phthalo blue and your crimson. And I'm talking just a hint. You don't want to have like that true color start to come out. You just want to just want to change the color of your white just a little bit to You don't want to have purple. <laughs> you want to have like a like a gray that's not your true just black and white gray. You want to have like a little bit of color in your gray. All right. And now we can start with the reflection of these trees. So you're going to do the same thing, making your lines Kind of just coming down. Now this is a lake that has like some wind on it and it's not going to be a perfectly crystal clear reflection so you can just take your brush and just scrape that paint down. So I'm going to take the extra paint off my brush right now and I'm going to keep dragging that down. You do have that little white line there still so if you um, bring your gray too close to your tree line already we'll just add a little bit of white on top of that and that should fix it back up and then you can just do some crisscross like some horizontal lines too like we have some water ripples you can start to build up some more with your shadows just kind of play around with it until you're happy with how it looks think about where your taller trees are and make sure you're reflecting those properly and then you can just take some more white and touch up that contact between the water and the tree line and then just add a couple more little bands of white just to show that we've got water, we've got a reflection, but it's not perfect. Okay, so now we've got our far background done. Next we're going to start on our tree line that's closer to the foreground. So I just took some sap green and some black. And I'm going to take a little bit of phthalo blue, a little bit of yellow ochre. And I'm going to take a little bit more black so it's not too colorful. We want it to be not very saturated. So that's our color. And I'm just going to start by putting this a little bit farther down from our first line and this one's going to start to make its way closer to the foreground here and then we just kind of carry that line straight out like that so now we can see this is closer than that because we've got some color in here we can see a little bit more detail I'm going to take some black a little bit of burnt umber and a little bit of phthalo blue just to darken that green and I'm going to put a little line using my flat tip brush here. I'm just going to put a little line at the base so that I can see where this is contacting our lake. 
And then as you get closer to the foreground, you want to add more phthalo blue and a little bit more burnt umber because things are going to start to get a little bit darker and more contrast is going to be visible. Take just some umber here. Things are a little brown. All right, it's looking good. Now we can do our trees here. So I'm gonna take my smaller flat tip brush again, or my angle brush, I should say. And we're gonna take that sap green, burnt umber, and phthalo blue. And we'll do a little bit of black too. Let's do a little more phthalo blue. Let's add some white to that and some black just so that we can start pushing some of these into the distance. We got some, we got like a little forest here. So these ones that are farther in the background, I'm just gonna put some lines here. Can add even more white to those. Let's push them back even farther. And you don't have to go all the way down because you're gonna have more tree trunks in front of that. Then we can do some taller ones that are bigger because they're closer to us. And we'll put one right here, do one little crooked one right there. And then we'll do our nice little branches really quickly. Now this is when it is important to go all the way to the bottom sure you don't make your branches all perfectly even and all perfectly sticking out sideways. You, your branches are gonna have some bare spots, you're gonna have some that are sticking out more on one side, some angled down. Little spaces between the trees because there are more trees in there that we just can't see from our viewpoint but we can not see all of that fog behind it. So we do need to fill that in. mix some more. And you know, the more time and the more intricately you work on the details on these little branches, uh, the more realistic they're going to look. But you know, for Tutorial purposes, I'm kind of breezing through this pretty quickly just to show you how to do it and then you're welcome to go into as much detail or as little detail as you'd like. Let's put another one like right close to this one. Then we're going to take some more blue and some black and just really build up the shadows in here. I'm just taking patches of this paint and just building it in random little spots here to just build up the depth in this forest, create more shadows from our trees. That looks good. Then we could take some more sap green, a little bit of yellow ochre, and some white, a little bit of yellow, cadmium yellow pale. And we can start to add some highlights on top of the little mossy, grassy area here. Just kind of carry it, uh, wiggle, little wiggles with your paintbrush and drag it as like a diagonal, but with a little bit of an arc in it. Good. 
Then we need to do a little bit more with these trees. I'm going to take a little yellow ochre. We're just going to add some subtle little highlights. So I'm going to take a little yellow ochre and my burnt, or what is that? That's a crimson. <laughs> a little bit of white. And that gives me like, you know, an off brown color. And we're just going to start to add a little bit of highlights to a few of these branches. You can take some of your yellow as well. And I'm just going different directions with the brush. Almost like boom, boom, boom. This way, this way, this way, this way. It's just giving me a little bit more depth in here. Oops, I don't see much green there. You want to make your green in your trees stand out from the green in the grass, so that's why I mix that red and orange, red and yellow, uh, red and yellow to make that off orange brown color uh, for the trees because these trees are not the same color green as the grass. All right, that looks pretty nice. I think that's a good amount of detail, and now I can build up some more shadows in the grass area. So I just mix burnt umber with black. And we're gonna start to add some shadows under those highlights we put in already. And then for the very foreground here, that's just brown. You can actually start to see some warm colors show up at that point. All right, and now we just have to do our reflection there. So for the reflection, you wanna take your uh, colors you already had for the shadow or for all your trees, but we're gonna add some white and some yellow ochre and Brown And then we're just gonna do that same thing we did before but this time we have a little bit more detail visible in the trees So you want to try to keep um, a little bit more accuracy with Where you're putting your shadows just make sure you see a tree up here then put a shadow right down there and these shadows are pretty big they come all the way down really so just gonna start with those and we use a little bit more thalo blue as we're getting closer here that makes a little black in there too and just get those shadows nice and dark i'm gonna go right up to your shoreline a little shadow right there And then we'll just take a little bit more white, take an ochre and brown. It's got like a golden reflection here, kind of. We'll just do some crisscross patterns to get that look of the branches. Mix a little more blue and green together as we're coming down here. Black. And I'm gonna mix some black with my blue and we have a really dark shadow right here. Kind of carries out. building up what we have in the forest there. And it kind of turns into that warmer color. All right. Okay, now we're gonna work on our little reflections. Actually, let's boost this highlight again on top of the grass here. So I'm just taking a little bit of yellow, blending it in with that green. Kind of carrying that highlight around. It just makes things stand out a little bit more. It looks nice. Okay, now we can go back to this spot. So we need some white and brown. Just kind of let that blend a little bit with your uh, blue-gray color go in there and we'll just start to add little ripples in the water I 
I did not use any water uh, to thin down my paint for this painting. Sometimes I do that. Um, but if you did bring water to clean off your brushes or to thin down your paint, adding water to the white will help this uh, look, make these lines a little bit more smooth and less brush strokey looking, <laughs> if that makes sense. And then just, yeah, add these little ripples in here. Ah! <laughs> if you make one too big like that, then just go back and make it smaller. Just take the extra paint off your brush and then go under it there. Then we need a little bit of ochre mixed with our white. And we've got this spot right by the shoreline. We've got some moss accumulating or like some stuff just like accumulating by the shore. So you just want to carry that out. There, like that. And then you start to lose your color the farther back you go, so you can add a little more gray into those areas way back there. And I'm gonna build up the shadow again. Under here. It's all about building, building up your layers. So it makes it look realistic. It's one of the things. All right, so now that's looking pretty realistic. Um, what else can I do? Uh, maybe add like a little bit more of a highlight to the grass again, because that still feels a little bit off to me. Uh, just take some white, you can dry brush this here so you can make sure this is dry and then just take some of your white paint and you can start to fog out the tops of your trees. It just kind of pushes them into the mist a little bit. Just doing little swirly patterns with your bit of dry brush there. And just like that. All right, I think that looks good guys. Let's call that done. So I hope you enjoyed this painting tutorial and it's a good lesson on how you can build up your depth in your painting. Uh, it's good for learning dry brush techniques, how to paint trees, how to paint reflections, water, lots of good helpful tips in this video. Hope you enjoyed painting and if you have any requests for future videos you'd like to see, then leave a comment below this video. You can find my artwork on Instagram and Facebook. You can actually post your own rendition of this painting on your Instagram or, or on my Facebook page, The Painting Stoof. Uh, just tag me if you post it on Instagram and I'm looking forward to seeing your paintings. I'd also like to take this time to thank Kimberly Williams, who is my first patron on Patreon. Thank you very much, Kimberly. I appreciate your support. And if there's anything you'd like to see, then uh, let me know. And I'm looking forward to helping you with your painting. Hope you guys have a great day and happy painting. Bye-bye.